All right, so this is how we left our computer the last time we worked on it. And now we are going to connect this whole mess together. Let's start with our front panel. So here is a front panel connector. These two first pins are for the reset button, the two on top for the hard disk LED, these for the power button, and finally, these ones for our power LED. When connecting the plugs, make sure to respect their individual polarity. Not much voltage in there, but still. Next, we are going to connect our front panel 3.0 USB plugs. Very easy, simply make sure not to put it in the wrong direction. If you feel a resistance, switch directions of the plug and try again. All right, next, the front panel audio connector. Again, make sure to respect the orientation of the plug. Time to plug our CPU pump PWM cable. This is one that looks like a fan header. This will allow us to monitor the current water flow going through our loop. As you can tell, I pass a cable through the back of our case so that we have a little bit better cable management. Uh, and we're going to do the same with the GPU pump. We want to be able to monitor both pumps at any given time. All right, time to connect our exhaust fan. That is the only fan in the build which is not controlled by our NZXT fan controllers. And we're done with that. Now let's move to our power supply unit. For this build, I've ordered some custom sleeved cables. I wanted the color of our PSU cables to match uh, the rest of the build. I chose to show you the ATX24 cable in particular because I wanted to stress the fact that you will need Type 4 ATX plug to work with this particular power supply unit. The other extremity of our plug is a standard 24 pin ATX plug, so no problems with that. And what I really liked with those cables is that they come with their little individual plastic comb. And I'm gonna show you how to use it. So first we are going to separate the cables from each side of our plug and we are going to apply some pressure. I actually did hurt my fingers a few times uh, doing this. Uh, but when it's done, it's pretty solid. It really looks neat, it really looks clean and it helps holding this cable in a straight fashion which really makes your build looks awesome. So yes, the effort is well worth it in this case. All right, let's move to our power supply unit. I went for the RM750X from Corsair, meaning that this is a 750 watt, 80 plus gold graded PSU. This is a very efficient power supply unit. Note that the only thing we are going to need from the box other than the PSU is its electrical cable and certainly not the provided PSU cables. We have our own. And to attach our power supply to our chassis, we are going to need its bracket, cables, much more cables, and our screwdriver. Now we're gonna remove the seal, place the bracket into position and secure it into place with the provided four screws. Time to take a closer look to our PSU inlet. So here we have our type four inlet. Note that we have 16 by 10 pins for this plug. That's more than the usual type three PSU plug. Here we will plug in our SATA power as well as our four pin Molex cables. In turn, they will power our pumps, uh, fans and fan controllers. Those inlets will power our CPU directly onto our motherboard. And finally, this inlet will power our graphic card. All right, because there is so little clearance left already on the chassis, we are going to plug all our cables right now. And you'll see when we are going to actually put the PSU into the chassis, it's going to get really messy really fast. So let's get over all the tubes and cables, try to make some clearance so that we can slide in our PSU into its supporting bracket. Once that is done, we are going to screw in the two thumb screws to secure it onto the chassis. Okay, so try to find uh, your way into this. I guess that if you're building something similar to me, you might have a different configuration. 
Uh, point is the ATX24 plug should be in the upper middle cable hole. That, that is the shortest way to reach the motherboard plug. As for the graphic card cable, either the same hole or the one on its right. It's really up to you, but in both cases, the plug will be long enough to reach its destination. Last PSU plug we have to transfer on the front side of our chassis is the CPU cable, which will go through the upper left cable hole. All right, time to plug some stuff. I'm going to start with the Molex plugs. We got our CPU radiator fan controller, our GPU radiator fan controller, our CPU pump, the one on the left of the build, and our GPU pump, the one on the right facing the build. Okay, so now we are going to use the power SATA to power our RGB fans, first for the 360 rad and for our 480 millimeter rad. Now we're simply going to connect those PSU plugs onto their respective elements starting with the ATX24 pin onto the motherboard. Shouldn't take you much time, just make sure that you respect the orientation of the plug. And now we're going to plug in the graphic cards with its eight and six pins plug. And finally, let's go onto the CPU side where we are going to plug its eight pin and four pin plugs. All right, so I'm just gonna show you what I've done with some of the plastic comps which are provided with the PSU cables in terms of cable management. It's very easy to use and very nice when it's done right. Last step, but not the least, we are going to install some RGB strips on our build. And in this case, we're using the Bitfenix Anarchy 2.0 RGB LED. Uh, they are both magnetized and have some very sticky glue on them. So once installed, they will not move for a very, very long time. Of course, both of these strips are aura compliant, meaning that we can sync the rest of our build to their light. And that's going to make our build look really, really cool. We are going to connect our RGB strips directly onto the RGB connectors on the motherboard. The only tricky part here is to make sure that you do respect the polarity. If you look close, you will see there is a plus 12 volt sign on your motherboard and this is a lot of voltage. So it can potentially be dangerous if you don't respect it. So make sure that the gray cable on the plug is right in front of the plus 12 volt sign on your motherboard. All right, next up, filling the loops. <music> 